Hello and welcome everybody to La Historia, aka the history for you English speakers. We're going to go full Paul B and jump into every member state of the United Nations, but we're focusing solely on their historical stories. First up to bat is... No, 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 man, they're not all like that. <laughs> Afghanistan. Afghanistan has always been a land at the crossroads of history. So, welcome to Afghanistan, the one of the countries in the Middle East that when you hear of, you immediately picture a bunch of bombs and war zones and people getting killed and a bunch of crap, but if you look deep, you'll see a nation with a vast history, an interesting history, and uh, many of diverse different people groups. And a story that stretches back to the very foundations of humanity, as we'll uh, discuss. So the name Afghanistan is a slight derivation from the ethnonym Afghan, which refers to the Pashtun tribal peoples that live south of the Hindu Kush mountains. The earliest record of the name Afghan comes from Shapur I of the Sassanid Empire in the 3rd century CE. Also, quick side note, and this will set the standard for the rest of La Historia, I will be using the divisions BCE for Before Comma Era and CE for Common Era, instead of AD for After Death and BC for Before Christ. Um, reason I'm doing this, one word, secularism, for a longer reason why honestly just google it uh, i find bce and ce to be more accurate anyway but enough with the potential flame wars let's move on afghanistan's history starts with the indus valley civilization like a lot of south asian countries and the indus valley civilization is one of my favorite ancient civilizations uh they did a lot of great things but really they lasted from about 33,000 BCE to about 1300 BCE with their mature growth period being between 2600 and 1900 BCE and this was probably around the time they touched down in and ruled what is now Afghanistan because they stretch from like modern day northern India and Pakistan. One, one Indus Valley site has been found in the Oxus River in the Shortugai region in, east, in northern Afghanistan. Another known site is Mundigak. Mo moving on a little bit between the years of 2200 and 1700 BCE, we have the Bactria Marigana Archaeological Complex, or the BMAC for short. In the BMAC, we have found cities like Balkh, which is the birth and death place of Zoroaster, the founder of pretty much the world's first monotheistic religion, Zoroastrianism. And if you ask me, it's the best religion ever because we got Freddie Mercury from it. BMAC may have been home to the first Proto-Indo-Aryans, but the standard holds that it took place during the late Harappan period, which gave rise to the Vedic civilization of the early Iron Age. Down from the Caucasus came the two groups, the Aryans and the Medes. Now, when I say Aryans, I'm not talking about prehistoric Nazis, I'm talking about just you know, the ancestors of white people that came down from the Caucasus Mountains in East Asia. But the more important group was the Medes. According to historian Ernst Herzfeld, the Medians uh, had a pretty powerful empire that uh, stretched from Anatolia and modern day Turkey to Afghanistan and the borders of Northern India. But some historians like Helene Sankisi Wurdenberg uh, disagree with this and say there is no real evidence, but uh, most historians agree that, yeah, the Medians probably controlled Afghanistan. Now we're going to fast forward to 500 BCE and Darius I of Persia, um, ancestor of Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Achaemenid Empire. The Achaemenids came through Afghanistan, conquered it, and made it part of their great empire, and of course, if you don't know who the Achaemenids are, uh, you probably know them as the Persians from 300, or at least the, or at least the greatly exaggerated version of the Achaemenid Persian rulers. Darius I gave Afghanistan its first four provinces, or satrapies, that were governed by a governor or a satrap. These satrapies were Arya, with the capital of Herat, Arachosia, Bactriana, Satagidia, and Ganhara. Now we're going to fast forward to 330 BCE when everyone's favorite Alexander the Great came over. 
um, and just a year after defeating Darius III of Persia at the Battle of Gogamela in modern-day Iraq, he uh, came over to Afghanistan, uh, was met with huge resistance from the hill tribes and uh, the mountain tribes because they were pretty loyal to the Achaemenid rulers. Um, this is a testament to the fact that the Achaemenid Empire really was kind of the best place to live in that period of time, but I won't go into that now. When Alexander the Great marched into Afghanistan, he is said to have said to his generals, this place is easy to march into and hard to march out of. Hmm, I wonder what that reminds me of. Although Alexander's rule was brief, he did put a lot of Hellenic culture into the area that lasted for several centuries, even though he named a shit ton of cities after himself. Alexandria of the Arians, Alexandria of this, Alexandria of that, Alexandria, Alexandria, we, we fucking get it, man, you're the best. Briefly touching on the Greco-Bactrian dynasties, which succeeded Alexander the Great, Buddhist doctrines were actually pushed into Afghanistan at this time, reaching as far as bulk in the, time, in the lifetime of the Buddha, but that was a little bit before Alexander the Great. The Greco-Bactrian kingdoms were deposed by the Mauryan dynasty in the first century CE by Chandragupta Maurya of India, and uh, this empire spread Hinduism and, most importantly, Buddhism into Afghanistan. Uh, those two religions became huge in the region at the time. Shortly after this, Chandragupta Maurya, called Sandrakadis by the historian Strabo, reached a peace treaty with the Seleucids, who were uh, the rulers of the Greco-Bactrian kingdoms. He got control of the area south of the Hindu Kush mountains upon intermarriage with one of their people and uh, 500 elephants. There you go. Give me your daughter and 500 elephants and you get this land. Fuck. See what see what kings used to deal with back in the day? Jeez. Going through time a little bit, through to the Middle Ages, we we had uh, that you can Google later or I'll put some info up on the screen. We had groups such as the Indo-Parthians, the Indo-Scythians, the Sassanids, the Huna, Kedardis, Alcon, Nitzak, and White Huns, and the Kushans, who actually had a bit of an empire of their own. Fast forward into 642 CE. In comes a new religion, straight from modern-day Saudi Arabia. That's right, here come the Muslims. Established by Rashidun Arabs, and when I say Rashidun Arabs, these were the very early Muslims who were guided under the four rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. Under the Muslims, the Shahi or Shahiya dynasties ruled uh, the Kabul Valley and most of like northeastern Afghanistan and the old province of Ganhara, which is uh, Kashmir and present-day Pakistan. In the Middle Ages, Afghanistan was recognized as Khorasan, with the capitals being Balkh and Harat. So the, the Kapu Shahi ruled uh, the Kabul Valley and Ganhara from the early 3rd century CE to the early 9th century CE, so give or take 600 years. Capitals around this time were Kabiza and Kabul, and the extremely hard to pronounce, I'm gonna read it off my phone, Ubadhandapura, also known as Hund. Much easier. They were known for the struggles against the Ghaznavid tribal people, um, especially under the Rajput king, Jayapala, Jayapala. And then history's greatest ex exception, to steal from Crash Course World History, wait for it, the Mongols. Here come, here come the Mongols, uh, trampling over East Asia, setting up good trade routes as they do, but in setting up those good trade routes, they destroyed a lot of cities, including Bamiyan, Herat, and Balkh. And of course, they destroyed a lot of fertile farm areas because, you know, they had to do that, right? You can't have the subjects farming stuff. And most of the major cities north of the Hindu Kush mountains became part of the Mongol Empire. Then along came the Timurids, but uh, we're, I'm kind of running short on time, so I'm not going to talk about them. Then comes the modern era, when Afghanistan was ruled by the Mughals, which were like South Asian Mongol hybrids. The Uzbeks, who were, yes, the founders of Uzbekistan, the Turkish peoples, the Safavids, the Hotaki, Durrani, and Barakzai dynasties. Then came the British influence as they were setting up their empire and consolidating their power. They had a, a first Anglo-Afghan war. Um, it ended in 1879, the Treaty of Gandamak, and here's the photo of the King of Afghanistan, Mohammed Yaqub Khan, and Britain's Sir Louis 
Kavanari. Then came King Amanullah Khan, who tried to get Afghanistan out of its traditionally isolationist past. After a third Anglo-Afghan war, he tried to amend the Article 68 in the Afghan Constitution, which, which would make elementary education compulsory. He also abolished the traditional niqab or Muslim veil for women and um, introduced many co-educational schools. So this guy was kind of a progressive. Unfortunately, a civil war broke out in 1927. But two years later, in November 1929, King Amanullah's cousin, Mohammed Nadir Khan, became king of Afghanistan after deposing Habibullah Khan. After becoming king, he decided to consolidate his power to try and rebuild and regenerate Afghanistan, as you do after a civil war. But in 1933, he was killed in a revenge killing by a student from Kabul. The next ruler of Afghanistan after that was Muhammad Zahir Shah, who was Nadir's cousin. He took power at just 19 years old. He reigned from uh, Nadir's death in 33 till 1973. He ruled with the assistance of his uncle, Sardar Muhammad Hashim Khan, Jesus Christ, these people have long names, until 1946. In the same year, another uncle became prime minister and started to um, try to rebuild Afghanistan's greatness and uh, introduce more progressive policies and lobbied for greater political freedom. So now we have reached the contemporary era. This is give or take 1973 to now. The monarchy ended after a drought in between 1971 and 1972. And uh, the way the monarchy was deposed was hilarious. There was a non-violent coup on July 17th, 1973 when the king at the time, Zahir Shah, was in Italy getting treated for lumbago and eye problems. <laughs> just, ima just imagine, you're like, okay, I'm sick, I gotta go somewhere else to get healed, I get back, what? I'm, I'm not king anymore and there's a democratic republic? What the hell is going on? <laughs> and of course, a lot of us know what happened after that. There was a, there was a war with the Soviets in which Mujahideen groups rose out of the hills in Afghanistan. Um, these Mujahideen groups were aided by the administration of the time, uh, led by Ronald Reagan, and uh, those Mujahideen groups became what is now known as the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Uh, so yes, uh, the, even at the time there was a Western newspaper, I believe it was a British newspaper, who praised Osama bin Laden as a freedom fighter. Uh, there was another civil war that lasted between, between 1989 and 1996, year of my birth, what up? Luke, don't say what up to civil wars. It's not, it's not, it's not, it, it's not sensitive. Come on, come on. Then we got to the, the Taliban's control in the war on terror, and of course, uh, the US intervention in Afghanistan has been going on since 2001. I have my opinions on it. I am not going to express them here because this is a history show ba based mostly on facts and the story of a country. This is not the environment to espouse certain views. But like I said at the start of this video, Afghanistan may ha may be a country currently torn by war, but beyond it, it is a nation that has underwent so many different rulers and so many different things, and they have continued to push forward into the 21st century with democratic reforms, um, more political freedom, and uh, they've ev and they've helped so many areas around uh, them flourish. Uh, the Pashtun language is the origin of the current Farsi that Iran speaks. Afghanistan is quite fascinating to me because it's it's really the hybrid country between the Middle East and Southeast Asia. If that was the first episode of La Historia, I hope you enjoyed our breakdown of Afghanistan's historical story. We will see you in Albania.